Because I don't believe in luck. You know, uh, you said you have to be in the right time, in the right place. That's not true. You have to push it to get to the right place yes. at the right time. Hello and welcome to a very interesting interview. Today, I have with me Mr. Show Business himself, Etienne Pradier. I started Magic about 10 years ago and I was a bartender at some of these venues and wonderful venues in London. And this was one of the busiest working magicians on the scene. He probably still is one of the busiest magicians out there. So he's one of the magicians that I started watching and was inspired me, you could say, to get into magic to some extent. Our styles are very different, but I'm sure all of you watching this right now who are magicians already know Etienne and you're dying to wait to listen to what he has to say. So how did you start into magic? I start a um, long time ago, but actually I wasn't a, a full-time magician when I was 25. Oh, so, okay. no, because I, I, I started in France and I met two important people, um, guys called Gérard Majax, okay. the very famous magician, and Eden Ark. Okay. Eden Ark is a guy who does a lot of rope tricks. Okay. Uh, and Duvivier as well was a, a he teach me, uh, I think I had a free lesson with Duvivier. Mm -hmm. But the rest is Ed and I gave me some lesson and, uh, and from then on uh, I was working in fashion in Paris for seven, eight years. Fashion? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't show now, but <laughs> check me out, man. And so after that I decided to do magic. So mm -hmm. I come to England. Mm -hmm. In England I worked for uh, one year in fashion in Eastbourne. Wow. And from Eastbourne uh, I had a, a fall off uh, with a company. So anyway, so. And I opportunity, a big opportunity came up. Uh, a guy proposed me uh, um, to do some magic on the cruise. Okay. So uh, the first job I did was from Calais to Dover, six round trip, doing kid show. Can you believe that? Oh my God, you doing kid shows? Nightmare. Wow. <laughs> but but I loved it. It mm -hmm. was a six round trip. That was great. And straight away the guy said, "Do you want to go to Singapore to do maybe uh, seven months?" I said, "Okay, that sounds good." So the money was great. And I went for Singapore, and I was doing Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, all around the island for cruise to nowhere. And I remember doing a small kid show for maybe 30 minutes in the morning. Mm -hmm. And after that, I went to do a stage show for 15 minutes on stage. That was great. Wow. And I done it for seven months. So every day I was working. I even done a, a Sum Trunk Illusion. We built the Sum Trunk Illusion, and we done that with the girls from uh, Philippines, I remember. Wow. So she did that. And it was great, so I did that for seven months. And when I came back, I searched, actually I was talking to Dominique, I, I started in Emily's, but I did not work for Marvin Magic. I was oh. working for a company called Shoe Magic. It was upstairs, okay. but that's where I met Andy Neyman, I mean, uh, uh, Marvin and all these people. Um, and so I become friends with quite a few people there, and uh, also Guy Olinsworth at the time. Yeah. And from now on, I stay in England, and I, will, I start to do a lot of corporate work, mm -hmm. weddings, and I think, I believe I was one of the first ones to do wedding fairs and nobody was doing wedding fairs because mm -hmm. I was living in Kent and suddenly I said, oh, wedding fair is great. And a friend of mine was doing an hotel. Mm -hmm. So he said, why don't you do magic? I said, well, it would be great. So I did some, some, I had a stand and I mm -hmm. started to do a wedding and wedding was fine because you have to, I mean, you could do on the day like 50 bookings on the day. That's now it's, yeah. it's uh, wedding fair is dead, but mm -hmm. that's why it started me up. So that was great. So I work as hard as I can and I, uh, pick up the, the corporate work and from the corporate work I went on and on and on so now I'm really busy. I've been busy for 20 years yeah. solid on, on corporate works and, and private wow. party and so on. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That, and then also on the side of that in the magic community you're so famous because you won, you've you competed FISM, you've done so much of winnings and competitions and yeah, stuff. Yeah I mean all the competition I've done it was for personal mm -hmm. things you know. I, I've never been a magician who work. I mean, all people who win the competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I won a few competition, magician of the year for Magic Circle, obviously, mm -hmm. and third in FISM, but I never really, really practiced my act. Mm -hmm. And you, when you see me perform, it's, um, I try to be as natural as I can. So I think dedicated uh, uh, practice is, very, is a good access to, to become yeah. a very famous magician at competition. And I couldn't really bother to do it. So I've done my best, and I won a few prizes. And, I was really happy to do it, but it was more of personal things, you know, it mm -hmm. wasn't an ego thing to do. Yeah. It was something I wanted to do, but it's funny because all the competition, I've never been happy on one competition. I look back, I, I, to be honest, I never really watched myself, but mm -hmm. when I done the competition, I wasn't really happy with what I did, so it's why I carry on doing it until I thought maybe one day I'll get the best, best act or something, but mm -hmm. it never really happened. So I, I much prefer to do corporate and things like that because it's, it's more me, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, to be course. natural and 
Yeah. And, I, and I perform for for George public, you know. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it's so entertaining. Even your competition acts is just tailored to magicians. It's very entertaining for magicians. Yeah, I, I believe if you do something for magician, mm -hmm. you need to to put some cap of twist for magician. Yes, because yes. we all we all know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I try, don't try to fool them as such. Uh, for me, my, my, my ass is, I think the most strong thing is to entertain people. So if you could entertain people and you know what the magician is looking for, you could mm -hmm. twist the end or something like that. And that's what people like, you know? Yes. So more you could change the end of the tricks or something like that, or make some mm -hmm. jokes about magician or they know, mm -hmm. I think that's much, much interesting. So the most important thing is knowing your audience. If you know you're performing exactly. that kind of audience, it's those kind of jokes exactly. you Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you do a party, I mean, I do, like you know, for a lot for royal family, mm -hmm. my act will change sadly when I do a party for Dan in Kent or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to adapt. I, I believe I, I, I describe it as a chameleon. Right. And chameleon yes, is very yes. important because if you're a magician and you do the same thing for the same for different people, that's what doesn't work. Mm. You know, every every group of people, and especially in England with uh, the classes, you have to be careful of that. Yeah. So you could change it slightly. The, the, the magic trick will be all the same, mm -hmm. but the, the the delivering and the gag and all that, you have to adjust it. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Understand your audience. Yeah, because you, you know? couldn't do some of their stuff for the Queen like you would no, do. No, I mean, if I, if I do Prince Charles, I do the ding dong. Uh, over there. <laughs> I, may, I may have done it, I'm not sure. Okay. But, you know, you have to judge. The, the, I wouldn't be surprised if you did, no. if you did well, it. I, I don't think so, I can't even tell you. Know? <laughs> but what, so but, what about these royal family gigs now? How do you get these gigs? Oh, that was like? a very interesting thing, and it's a very good lesson in magic if mm -hmm. you guys are listening. Um, uh, very quickly, I mm -hmm. was. Uh, I live in a village called Y. Okay. It's a small village, and one of the guy there is a famous painter. So he mm -hmm. does painting, and all around the world he sell it. And he said to me a couple of days before that party of his, I think it was his daughter's birthday party. He said, Etienne, please come to my party. I pay you. I said, Look, I'm not going to charge you. It's my mm -hmm. friend. Yeah. I said, Look, I come, but I'm in London. I will come back later. But it could be like 10, 11. He mm -hmm. said, Please come. Now I had two options: no going at all or maybe come back and do it uh, half an hour for free. I decided to do half an hour for free. I get there, do the party for him, and he was a, a famous guy, he's actually, a, a, I didn't know at the time, but he asked me my cards, mm -hmm. I gave him my cards, I done my things, everybody was happy, and straight away, maybe two months later, I got a big big job for Prince Charles, and didn't really, mm -hmm. really connect the two. He was the agent of Prince Charles, because he was buying the pictures from Prince Charles, uh, from, from this painter, and sell it to yeah, Igrove and things like that. So, and the, the, the story there is very important. You don't know who's going to be, you know. Mm -hmm. So, whatever you could do, it stretch a bit. Because I don't believe in luck, you know. Uh, you said you have to be in the right time, in the right place. That's not true. You have to push it to get to the right place yes. at the right time. And that's so important. So, always have something on you. Yeah. Make an effort to do magic as much as you want mm -hmm. and people, because you don't know who's going to be there. Exactly. That's an example. I mean, I, I, I would have never turned up to this party, and I work a lot for Prince Charles every year, put different artists. Mm -hmm. This year, I try to put a very famous guy, and, and I, I can't tell anything, but it's okay. very good. So, this is the key. Yeah. More you do, more you get business. Mm -hmm. I always believe I'm a very hard worker, I'm a work alcoholic. I work a lot because mm -hmm. more you work, more you get jobs out of it, you know? True. Yeah. So true. I, I think I made the same point in my residencies. The reason I go and do residencies is people say, right place, right time, like you exactly. said. But if you get out there and you're performing seven days a week, you're increasing those odds exactly. by so much. And also residency like you do is great because if you, I, I just saw it today and mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful things and you, you will do very well there. The clients here, you have to look for clients. A residency in a... I mean, don't get me wrong, but in a, in a place you're not going to get any job, yeah. it's good when you're young and you want to practice your stuff, yeah. that's fine. But if you do a residency where you have potential clients, mm. I mean, I give you the idea, uh, another example of David Stone and David Jar. They used to work in a res in residency in Central Bay. Right. They used to pay the people to be there <gasps> oh. because they, all the clients there was millionaire people and that's why they get the database of clients. So that's really important oh. to choose for residency, make sure you get something out of it, and that's, that's the best thing to residency. So the money is, is relative, so you don't yeah. need to, there could be 100 pounds or 200 pounds, it makes no difference. Mm. Get the people, get there, get the cards, a lot of business cards, as much as you can, and you get the job. So that's you know the such spot. a good tip. Thank mm. you for that, that's amazing. So do you have any funny story that happened at a gig? Oh, Maybe lot of story. Load, I'm, I'm sure. Oh. Is there something you can share with us? Uh, stories, stories. You know about the ring trick? Uh, no. So let's, let's I'm doing the, the ring tricks uh, um, in a corporate party mm -hmm. for a company called Sotheby's. 
Okay. And it was a nice place in London. I'm doing tricks and I take the ring, the ring disappeared, gone. Mm. Lost it. She dropped it on the floor, right? Oh. So I'm looking for a ring everywhere. We can't find the ring. So it's two options. Somebody took the ring and I lost the ring. She took the ring. She didn't tell me. We didn't know. But anyway, the next week, got an email from the company, Sotheby's. They said, look, we're going to, they have the clients calling, uh, contacted us. They're going to charge us thousand and thousand of pounds. I think it was hundred thousand pounds. Oh. So are you unsure? That's it's fine. I'm unsure. But on the back of my mind, I thought it must be there. So I went there with Paul Martin. Paul Martin. Yeah, Paul Martin. Shout out. Love you, baby. I love you. <laughs> And we went there and we, uh, it was on Monday, I always remember, we got there, and, uh, so we went upstairs and it was a race floor. Mm -hmm. We opened the, the, the board, we cracked the board, we take a, a torch, we look inside, the ring was there. We pick up the ring, went back to Sotheby's, give it to them, and believe me or not, it was worth £120. So it was a oh totally con. The girls tried to sue us for hundred thousand pounds. So, what? you know, you have to be very careful of that. And uh, no long time ago, about three weeks ago, I did a big party in London, and this is the same story. Mm -hmm. Take the ring of this lady on the top clients, lost the ring, and when I look at the ring, I find the ring. But instead to, to show the ring and give it back to her, because it was everybody with torches, mm -hmm. I took the ring and I put it in my wallet, yeah. inside the seal envelope, yeah, yeah. I add it, and I opened the wallet, I said, is, uh, is an envelope for you? Mm -hmm. She opened the envelope, it was a lady, she opened the envelope, it was a ring, and guess who it was? Theresa May, the Prime Minister. Oh, so she, I didn't recognize her, but she looked at it and right. she went, oh my God. So I said wow. to her, trust me, I'm French, and she went. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> or maybe like that, she went like that. <laughs> That's great. Something like that, it's a true oh, story. So you, have, you have to be careful of everything yeah. you borrow as well. Yeah, so that's, that's a, a good problem. point. Yeah, if you're, mm -hmm. you're boring rings like this, you yeah, you have to yeah. be very oh. careful if it's uh, if sometimes you know if it's very expensive, mm -hmm. you have to be very careful, especially oh. with using a, a free fly, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> ring fly. Yeah, ring, yeah, ring, fly. ring fly. So where do people see you and find you? Do you so have? Well, the pr problem I do uh, uh, most of my jobs uh, probably like you is corporate work, mm -hmm. is private work, weddings and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. If I do a, a, a show, I do a Canterbury Festival and things like that, there's all more in Cannes, okay. private. So people yeah. could find that out on your social media? Yeah, your so social media, you go to my website, frenchmagician.co.uk, mm -hmm. they okay. can look. Sometimes I'll put all of these links down in yeah. the video below, so yeah, we yeah, can yeah, find yeah. you there. Perfect. Excellent. Well, thank you, Etienne, for okay. coming and doing this interview. Can we do and one trick for them? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah what do you want to say? Yeah. Okay. This is a trick just for magician. Cool. Yeah. There we go. I catch it very well because I used to okay. play cricket for fun. Right. <laughs> okay. As a goalkeeper. Let's so see. for a viewer. Maybe see all the card like that. Perfect, yeah. Maybe and Dominic, you can come closer no, if you want to. You oh, can do okay. as well, yeah. Okay. So Brandon, I'm going yes. to ask you to say, say stop. Stop. You remember the card? Yeah, got it. I showed you the camera. Yeah. Yeah. I cut the card. And now I will do to the camera, right? Because they also the card. So mm -hmm. two things I know by your card is not this one. No. Right? And also, don't tell me anything, but mm -hmm. I also know is not the king of clubs, right? So now, because I know he's a king of clubs, watch my hand. What was your card, Brendan? King of clubs. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Show business, man. I love that. <laughs> a lot of slide of hand here. Yeah. It's called no snap. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is perfect. This is typical Etienne right here. So I want to thank Etienne for doing this. I want to thank Dominic for filming behind the scenes. And before we finish, I think Paul Reagan wants to tell us something. So let's leave that to him and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. See you. A little bit there. There's too much of me in there. A little bit here. Etienne Prader. Now, did I pronounce your name perfect. right? Perfect. Radier. Pradier. Yeah. Pradier. Etienne Pradier. That's perfect. Perfect. Brendan said I can't come in until you like, subscribe, and comment below. Please, just, please, please.